Hi, my name is Mark. I'm an incubation engineer at GitLab and I work on GitLab Service Desk. And today I want to show you how you can set up Mailroom and Service Desk in your GDK. There is um, a how-to in our GDK doc how-to folder and it's called Service Desk Mailroom Markdown. And there you can find all the steps that you need in order to get this up and running. Um, before we start, I'm heading towards point number five. You need two email addresses. I would recommend you use a Gmail account because um, kind of everyone went through this and people know how to set it up properly and we know it supports all the things we need. Um, please set up two new Gmail accounts with whatever email address you come up with. Um, enable two-factor enable two-factor authentication and set up an app password for it. Um, you will need this because um, we want to access it via IMAP and um, Gmail um, discourage using of those things. Um, so we need this app password to make this work. So we'll just give you a minute. You can pause this video and create those email addresses um, and then come back to it and hit play again. First of all, we stop all GDK services. So you head over to your GDK. I'm in the GitLab folder right now. So I go to the GDK folder and I run GDK stop. So this is very important because we, we, we override settings um, and we install new things and we really need to stop it. The next thing for some historical reason, um, we needed to fix the GitLab mailroom gem version to 0.0.9. Um, but to make this work, we need a higher number. Uh, we need a higher version. In this case, it's 21. Maybe that it's 22 when you um, when you watch this, but this does not matter. We just use 21 in this case, and you will use whatever is the current version here. So please head over to your um, gem file in the GitLab folder. Ah, I'm there. Um, and there you see this um, .9 version. We use 21 here. And that's kind of it. <clears throat> the next part is run bundle install in your GitLab folder in your terminal. Um, this is important, so you really install that version. So again, go into your terminal, um, go to the GitLab folder, and then run bundle install. This might take a few seconds, but I have those things pre-installed, so it's quite fast. Um, the next thing is, we need, um, so the ingestion works like this. We have mailroom, a separate process. You will, you will also need to run it separately. And the idea is that this mailroom process pulls the inboxes um, that you just defined with your, um, with your app password. And we, we will also add this configuration later on. Um, and it will pull it and every time it finds an unread new email, it will take it and push it to the GitLab backend. And to make this work, it uses um, the webhook mechanism via a internal API. Um, and to make the authentication here, we use a shared um, mailroom secret token. So we just generate one. So let's copy this. This will just generate a, a random number. Um, so actually not a number, but a random sequence of characters and write this to a hidden file called GitLab Mailroom Secret. You can do whatever you want with it, um, rename it, but you need to take care you actually um, add the correct path to it later. I would recommend you just leave it as is. So back in the um, terminal, um, you can just paste it. It's okay. It will always um, create that in your, in your users folder. If you want to take a look at it, so this is completely optional, but if you if you feel like you you want to take a look at it, um, you can just open it. Um, and it's just some random stuff, so nothing fancy here. So what do we need here? What do we need next? Um, we need the full path to this secret file. Um, if your system supports real path, perfect. If it doesn't, you can use this. Um, it will change to your home directory, but it will also print the complete um, path. <clears throat> um, 
maybe if you know your user and stuff like this, this will be okay because you already know where it is, but we need that full path. In my case, it's slash users amzalico and then the secret file. We need to copy this later on. Okay, so now you have your email addresses um, all set up and you have an email an app password. We can head over to the next section and this is kind of the configuration in our GitLab YAML file where we actually tell GitLab, hey, we want to use incoming email and we want to use service desk email. So, so we take this whole piece, copy it and head over to our GitLab YAML file. So GitLab YAML, there it is. And when you access this the first time, you will see there's some production um, section. You can just collapse it or scroll down until you reach the development section and please paste this here. Some proper indentation because YAML cares. Um, so what do we actually do here? We enable incoming email. This is important because otherwise um, we won't see those um, email addresses we can use and it won't actually, the system won't support it. Um, the next thing, let's assume you have, your email address is superduper at gmail.com. Then you would say superduper and then the plus and the key thing at gmail.com and you would add superduper at gmail.com as the user. Then provide your fancy app password, which would look like this maybe. Um, please let the delivery method stay at webhook. Um, GitLab URL should be fine if you use um, a domain name or something like this. Change that accord accordingly. Um, and now please add the real path of your secret file here. So in my case, it's that. In your case, it might be something different. If you know your user, you can just replace your user with that here. That's also fine. Oops. Okay, if you use Gmail, those settings are perfectly fine. If you do not use Gmail, that might differ. Um, for the service desk email, let's imagine you use service desk at gmail.com and then you would add the plus key notation here. Um, service desk at gmail.com as the user, your app password and kind of the same stuff we did above. So like this. And then you are set um, to actually try this out, which is kind of cool. So it says restart all services. And so let's do that. Um, get back to your GitLab development kit folder and run GDK start. Yay! Here we are. Um, I just took a random project. It really doesn't matter because it's enabled by default for all projects. Um, this is kind of polluted by my experimenting, so I just took that one here. Um, head over to issues and service desk, and this is kind of your command control for service desk. And um, if you if you configured it correctly, you will see some some magic service desk email address here. In my case, I use um, maxalaiko dot service desk at gmail.com and it adds the path to the project plus the idea of the pro project plus issue. And the next thing, um, I just mentioned, uh, yeah, I, I just mentioned that mailroom is a different process and we need to run it. Um, and that's true. Um, I use just a new terminal tab or a new um, terminal window. This is all perfectly fine. Just head over to your GitLab folder. This is kind of the important thing here. Copy this one. It will actually use our GDK, no, not our GDK, but our GitLab YAML file settings because this file, the mailroom.yaml, is actually a dynamically generated configuration file from those settings. Um, but Mailroom does not start Rails and it does not start um, GitLab. So it's really kind of completely separate. 
but it uses the configuration from Giller. So let's copy that. We installed the new version, so every, everything should be fine. Just paste it here and it will actually not print anything. So we just know, okay, it, it kind of listens and it pulls every few seconds um, and checks for new um, emails. Let's get back to our project. We have our email, service desk email address. I copy that and let's send an email. Hello world, how are you doing? Ta-da! We have a new issue. So, what actually is a service desk issue? Um, and, um, code wise, um, it's defined by an issue um, where the author is the GitLab service bot. And we also have the email address of the issue here. Yeah, and it's, sorry, and it's confidential by default. <clears throat> You will also see this in the list view. Um, there's actually no difference here, um, but the service desk only li lists service desk emails. So this is our service desk issues. So when we write a comment on it, like, hey, I'm fine, um, then GitLab will send an email. And because GDK has no setup for outgoing emails, um, we will find this in letter open. So let's send this out. Refresh letter opener and there it is. So if you would like to answer to this one, you would need additional setup, like really defining an SMTP connection or SMTP for sending out um, emails um, for GDK, which is also okay. Um, but we won't cover this here. Maybe I'm, I do a second video on this one. Um, so this is just the intake, um, the intake side of things. <clears throat> this is it. Um, I hope you enjoyed the little how-to um, and you're all set up and ready. If you encounter any um, difficulties, um, please ping me or raise an issue or just ask someone who's familiar with um, Service Desk. Um, yeah, so see you soon. <laughs>